the world looks at you like a fucking monster. Police hate us. Squareheads think we're fucking the worst criminals. They think we're drug lords. They think we're fucking all these bad stuff, which is all bullshit anyway. And then you end up in a prison system where the corrective services hold the same view as society does. So they target you. So not only have you got the criminals in there you've got to deal with, because they think, oh, you think you're a big bad bike, let's test him. Then you've got the management want to make your fucking life hell. So I was in jail for a very long time, eight years. Out of the eight years, I spent five years in isolation due to the management deeming me a risk and a threat to the system. So they housed me in 23 and a half hour lockdown. And keep in mind, I was a young man when I was in prison. Just a young, young kid, really. I went into jail, one thinking pattern, came out with a different thinking pattern. Now I don't fear jail. I used to, in the back of my mind, think, fuck, I wonder what jail's like. It's not going to be a pretty place. But jail now is my second home. Jail's not an issue anymore. Prison system's fucking weak, so the average person walks around when he's angry and he thinks, fuck, I don't want to go to jail. Someone like myself walks around and thinks, <laughs> what the fuck is jail? Jail's nothing in this country. You know, jail's fucking soft. Every family has lawyers, doctors, and so forth. And the younger ones grow up wanting to be the best lawyer like my father, like my uncle policeman, this, that. I grew up wanting to be the baddest gangster on the street, following the footsteps of my cousin Sam and John. And I grew up looking up to them. And that's how I ended up being a fucking nomad and a thug on the streets of Sydney. I spent 20 years in the club. I retired because just fucking over it. Everyone retires from something in life. <laughs> you work in a law firm for fucking 20 years, you retire. You work in the, as a serviceman, you retire. My job was being a nomad, so I retired. But I'm still a nomad, just retired. I'm wearing my colours now as a show of pride and fucking I earn to wear this for the rest of my life. Another thing I want to address, the 1% means simple as this. There's these American guys in America who were the leaders of the Hells Angels, and his name was Sonny Bargo. I know it's not my place to talk about another gang, but I'm explaining the 1%, and I have to justify where it come from. The judge was sentencing them, and they were ex-servicemen in the army and that, and the judge said to him, you're 1% of society that came back from the army and didn't adapt to normal life. So he walked away from the court, he spent a lot of years in jail, he was a soldier, and created the 1%, and then every other gang in the world followed the Hells Angels. You've got to give them credit when credit is due. They created the 1%er, which I'm wearing right now. Their leader come up with the idea of 1% because he was a hard man, he was from the army, he didn't like the way the world was when he came back, so he rebelled against the government and started the bikies. And that's how I stand before the world today. I'll take you to another place in jail. I got jail tattoos when I was in prison. And I've got here, Lab for Life, it's a prison gang. And I've got a few teardrops. The teardrops mean nothing. People say it represents how many people you've killed, but not me. I just thought it looked good, so I got the teardrops. Police are full of shit. If you listen to the police, and you listen to Chinese whispers on the street, you'd think I killed heaps of people. <laughs> but I ain't killing no one. So the 1% represents all the bikies. I've got another tattoo on my hand. It's a prison gang as well. I was in jail for a decade, so people think how many gangs have I been in. Notorious was a prison gang formed in jail, which me and my brothers and my cousins opened up. I've got my brother's name here. I've got Mayhem here, it's part of my patch. An old gang when I was a kid, Scorpions. So I've been in a few gangs, <laughs> you know? And I'm actually proud of it because at 35 years old, I've spent 20 years on the streets. I've got no scars on my face. So obviously I was a bad enough fucking person to keep people away. People aren't stupid enough to come and shoot someone like me or stab someone like me. I'm fortunate enough to be known around town that you have to kill this bloke. 
to harm him. I never transitioned from being a bikey to normal. I just retired from the bikies. I'm still not normal. <laughs> I'm still, I still see things different to the average person. Did you know, I my thinking pattern? It's always going to be that thug. Let's just cave his fucking skull in. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. When you're a bikey, you party a lot, you with your boys every day, and you're controlling all your areas. You're making sure no other gangs are coming around. You're making sure your club's strong enough to take on any club wants to test the water. The nomads means everything to me. You know? It's like I'm married to my colours. See my vest? Okay, when you see another nomad, he won't have all this. So I've got, that's a 20 year patch. That's a five year patch. I've got, on the back of my vest, I've got life member. Only people that have served 20 years in the club and have earned the respect of the club get these patches. You know, you've got, all these patches represent something. They all earn patches, you know. These colours is something that I literally die for. I'm very proud of my colours. And I'm very proud of the fact that no other club or no other organisation was able enough to shut us down. I still fly my colours around and nothing, no one can do nothing about it. <laughs> my cousin's in jail doing 25 years. My best friends are all in jail. My brother's in jail. Jail's walking a park. Jail's like a fucking camp, really. So I'm not scared to go to jail. If anything, I want to go to jail to see my friends because I'm not allowed to visit them. Being a bikey and being a gangster, the management bans you from jails. So I can't visit my boys, I can't visit my mates, so I want to go to jail. <laughs> So people ask me, are you scared to go to jail? No, no, no. Trust me, I'll be on that truck with a smile from ear to ear. <laughs> it's a pretty smile, isn't it? <laughs> you say brigantes, amore toujours.